But um, the the frustrating part of it is that like alcohol isn't part of any of the concerns that anyone has in our case. And so uh, actually the, the list of concerns that they have is exceedingly small. Um, but uh, you know, again, all of that has to wait, but alcohol isn't a concern. It's not like they decided no alcohol for some reason. So then you're just sitting there like, so this is for nothing. Like that's really annoying. Uh, and they do that a lot. I mean, even before weed was legalized in Minnesota, if you got caught with a small amount of weed and you had a criminal charge for it, they during your probation, no alcohol. So people couldn't like even come home from work and have a beer or whatever. And it really frustrates a lot of people because that's how a lot of people relax after work. Be quick, says man. I don't get the Rokeda hate. Y'all acting like he gave Coke his kid Coke or something. Oh, shit. Wait, bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's... uh. Again, people who think that an eight-year-old was sitting there railing lines of coke are you're insane. Like yeah. the the amount of first of all, <laughs> if they thought that was happening, I wouldn't be able to be on this show. Um, that we'd be talking about way different charges going on here. Like that, those would be level. Those aren't even allegations by the government. The government yeah. doesn't even say that. Second of all, uh, there probably would have been a funeral. Children doing drugs is not like uh, adults doing drugs. And the um, those test results are terrifying. So I know that like for some people, it's, it's a funny joke. For me, it's not uh, that funny um, because it's like when we heard this result, we were dumbstruck we're baffled we're like and i i flat out said i said that's an impossible result that's an impossible result and um at some point i'll get to tell you guys how the state reacted to that statement and um the things that we demanded the state do and the state's uh response to those things should actually make people really angry with the state um but that's that's not a thing that like goes on and um, when you when you put children, uh, our children were out in the community with various teachers and various uh, instructors and, uh, you know, music instructors, uh, class teachers, uh, various church events. No one had any reported behavior of our children acting erratically or in any concerning way um, that would imply that at all. And our kids are all literally picture perfect health they're all above average height and weight they're all all of their levels are healthy the state is having trouble reconciling this test with the reality before them right. and that's that's part of the issue um but again none of that part of the story gets told especially when documents that really shouldn't be leaked due to laws in minnesota get leaked um you know that that's something where only part of the story comes out and uh, and then people are are basing it off of that. But anybody again, anybody who thinks that there's an eight year old just sitting around huffing down lines with no adverse effects, with no reports um, of concerning behavior, with no reports of withdrawal symptoms or anything like that, you know, they, I'm sorry, your worldview is skewed. But if if that had been an accusation of the government, we would be under very very different. Uh, cause I'd be, I'd be broadcasting shackles guys. Like that's not happening. Yeah. And it never and did. Oh, I did, do, is there a possibility that someone else came into contact with my child with drugs? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's certainly a possibility. That's certainly a possibility and it can happen in nefarious or non-nefarious ways but yes that's absolutely possible but what i know is that my child wasn't doing drugs i know right. that because there's no behavioral signs there's nothing like that there's no adverse health effects none of that is going on at all and it's why when the test result came back we said this is impossible like, it's literally, this is not a possible result. Something's wrong. We don't know if there is an issue with the lab. We don't know if there is some sort of external contamination by someone else. We have no idea. But we know what wasn't happening. And yeah, 
is there is there a worry that someone else may have done something either nefariously or or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. We want to know too. It's yeah. just the question is we don't know how to find out. And we're on a timeline where we haven't had the opportunity to even investigate it. Charles S. as where's our manners? Uh, we should welcome the Minnesota prosecutor's office to the chat. Y'all make yourselves at home. Feel free. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that, Charles. Mm -hmm. Woff says not confirmation bias. Rule of pro uh, primacy. Control the narrative yeah. in front of it. Easier to fool someone than convince them they've been fooled. Yada yada. P.S. Love you, Goober. Thank you, Woff. Appreciate yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that could be it too. But I, I really do think you know, um, like. I could talk a lot of shit about, and I have plenty of times talked a lot of shit about the government and CPS and the way police operate, but a lot of them genuinely believe they're doing the right thing. But they don't know anything other than what's in front of them. They don't. So they go through these things and they get X piece of information, Y piece of information, Z piece of information. And your brain forms opinions about people very, very fast. Yeah. Um, within the first 10 seconds of meeting someone, you've, you've made very strong opinions about them that you're not even conscious of. And so these people do the same thing. And oftentimes the picture that they're getting painted is really terrible because of their job. And that builds in a sort of natural bias towards a terrible outcome because they've seen too many kids in really bad situations that they're going to assume that these bad situations are always present. Now, again, the competing story can take a long time to come out, partly because you don't know what crazy story is getting told to these people that you have to correct. And that's why the court process is so important. And it's also why, because kids are involved and parental rights are involved, they allow this sort of parallel track quasi criminal system where you're working with the government to get your kids back while you're also fighting the government saying they should never have been taken in the first place. Right. Um, <clears throat> Sleepless in Minnesota said, why was there a mention in earlier release papers that stated you complied with the drug testing by taking the test, but refused to sign the release of that information for them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, because we never were required to take drug tests until we were ordered to take drug tests. And there was a drug test that was taken, uh, or that, let me get rid of the passive voice. Uh, I took a drug test voluntarily prior to being ordered to take a drug test. And I did not have the results of that drug test. I didn't know what the results would be. I had no idea. I've never had a drug test done in my life. Uh, other than I think I had a urinalysis test done back in 2006 or something, but this is a hair follicle test. I don't know what it would show. Look, I go to a lot of clubs. I've been to a lot of crazy parties. I have no idea what's going to pop up on this test. So I decided, you know what? I don't want the government to have access to this test that I'm doing for my purposes. Um, I was never ordered to take that test and the government didn't have any right to that test. But what I did was revoked their consent to get it because I had to consent to other medical records being released to them. So I just said, you guys don't get this test. You guys don't get that. And yeah. uh, they tried. Actually, it was fun because the government went on uh, went on the stand and lied and said that I revoked access to future tests, which is weird because I submitted tests that happened after that test to them. I gave it to them right there. And to say that I revoked anything other than that test is silly because the language was explicit. The government had no right to that test. And again, when I revoked, uh, when I revoked access to that test, the government um, had never asked me to drug test at that point, and they had no right to have the results. So here's uh, my advice to all of you guys. Never give the government access to a test that they don't have a court order or right to. Uh, if they want it bad enough, they'll get a court order or a warrant. And if that's valid, they can have that. But until they do, don't give it to them. So, yeah. But then, the you know, the consequence of that is that the government will go and say that you're somehow not complying with something that they didn't ask you to do. And you're like, <laughs> well, what do you do, Camelot? Do you testify then? Because they want you to testify, yeah. of course, because then they want to ask you a whole bunch of other questions. Um, and if you don't, if you don't want to answer those other questions then you have to just sit there quietly while they lie on the stand. Right. And that actually did 100% happen. Uh, the government worker just sat there and lied about it. I mean, the language is plain, uh, plain language revocation. And they, they just said that there was other shit that I was revoking. It's like, nope. And they keep telling me I revoked stuff and I keep telling them I did not. And I, so, so how do you fight that? If they're, if they, like, if there's a record of 
record of you doing a thing and they openly lie about it. How do you fight that? It's not uh, as simple as just saying, nah, -uh, in court, you have to file motion paperwork. You have to decide if it's worth it to go after them on that. And then you have to, um, you know, you basically have to make the case that the lie is uh, made with enough intent as to cause you harm rather than just being a mistake. Um, government has this free pass on things called harmless error where they can make a shitload of mistakes about you that impact your rights. But if it doesn't ultimately prejudice the outcome of your case, it's called a harmless error. Even though they do substantial harm to people constantly, um, they'll just call it a harmless error. And it's like, well, now you've, uh, now you've spent thousands and thousands of dollars. You've had a motion fight in court over it. Um, and, uh, and you may not get anything out of it because the judge might even say, yeah, you're right. They did that. But what, what harm did it do? It's like, well, I mean, I can name some things. I oh, you have to basically harm. prove that they did it nefariously on purpose. Yeah, and that they weren't just stupid. Right. Because that'll be the government's answer to everything, by the way. When the government does something that's wrong and takes away your rights, their answer is, sorry, we're retarded. <laughs> well, then maybe you, you shouldn't be running the government. How about that? That <laughs> should be the answer. You have these jobs. <laughs> I agree, Zia. I agree. But but the, the answer is, they go, oh, I'm sorry. We weren't mean. We were just retarded. And the, the courts go, you're right. You guys are just retarded. So you get off. Like, it's just fine for you guys to make that mistake. And, you, and people are sitting there having their rights stripped away, having their names run through the mud. And they're just sitting there going, what? is this like if i did that i'd be in huge trouble because the government did it it's harmless error and um it's it's a big problem with criminal and quasi-criminal things anytime the government is against the citizenry and they just make a harmless error it's like that but it's not harmless it's just harmless to the ultimate outcome of the case but long story short shit like that um you know you find the right time and you you fight it through motion paperwork but in the meanwhile you have to kind of deal with it now, most people aren't having their case broadcast to the world, and most child custody cases are sealed up so that, you know, people aren't able to get these documents in little pieces of, of very convenient leaks. They're not able to get them. Right. So most people don't have to deal with, uh, you know, sort of the reputational injury that the government's doing. But hey, again, do I care more about my reputation or getting my kids back? I care about getting my kids back. So the fight has to be fought in the right place. You just yeah. think that this is the system.